Vic here, going over my favorite round, the 30 caliber, 308. This baby's been around for a while, and it's been proving itself for a long time. Military, in the battlefield, in the woods, in the mountains, in the mud, in the brush. It's been there, done that. 30 caliber. Got a 30 carbine. Military, baby. This thing was around. 30, car 30 carbine. Then, the 30-30. This baby probably put down more deer than anybody you know. Look at that thing. Then, 308. Military. The whole deal. Awesome cartridge. Now, with 308, I'm going to show you a picture of my buddy's 400-pound uh, plus bear. We'll get to that in a second. That he got last year. He just got the mount back. Unbelievable. Beautiful job. 3006. Another one, American blood, sweat, and tears went in this bad boy, all right? Won a lot of battle with that. This is why I love these rounds. You know, it's just when you're talking about picking something, you like, for me, I like to get the good old American um, calibers. Anything American, I, I really like that. And especially if it's something here and it's got a little meaning to it. And you know what? In the woods... Uh, it's proven itself in the woods here, in the mountains. So I never shot, everybody thinks I'm a big mountain man, but I have never shot a deer with a rifle. Uh, you might have that, find that hard to believe, but I've never shot a deer with a rifle. And uh, believe it or not, I'm going to run the 30-odd six uh, for one spot. And hopefully if I can get into uh, maybe some thicker cover, I'm going to actually run a 35, but... Um, going to run the 306. Beautiful round. And I'm going to be running a uh, 180 grain round nose. 180 grain round nose bullet. Push right through the brush, hopefully, and uh, make contact with a nice Adirondack buck. But now, you're talking about rifles, bow and arrow and shotgun. Forget about it. I stack them right up these things. You should see it. I'll show you some pictures uh, Coming videos of I'll just gonna we're gonna do a little something. We're gonna lay my racks out I'm gonna try to go all furthest one back and start lining them all up in the order of years and Try to explain when I got them with a shotgun or with a bow and arrow But most of my my nice bucks are done with a bow and arrow I just have good luck. I'm a bow hunter. I love bow hunting. I got one bow. I had it for since 2000 and uh, uh, about four. I've been running that ever since. Why change if it works? It's simple as that. I'm sure in a couple of years from now, I'm going to upgrade. Maybe next year I might upgrade it. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to keep running what I got. Oh, so it's my second bow. I had one when I was a kid at four, 13, 14 years old. And then when I got to, I don't know, 18... 20 years old, I, I, I went with a new bow and never changed. But that's that's my main, that's what I usually do. A shotgun or a bow and arrow, if you are if you wanted to know. Yes, yes, yes. I just added that to the list of videos I'm going to do for you, all right? The bow and arrow, the shotgun, lining up the, the bucks, and, and getting the timeline for you. Add it to the list. Famous 300 Win Mag. I shot this before. It's got some zing to it. Let me tell you, it'll it'll get you. It it's got some power behind it. But uh, this one's on my list. I'd love to get a th uh, 300 Win Mag and uh, give that a whirl. You know, do some long distance shooting. That that thing must go. So that one's on my list. I'll get that one eventually. But for right now, got the 30 carbine, 3030. 308 and a 30 odd six and then look at the range of bolts you can run 100 110 130s so you can 150 grain 180s that's pretty common uh 200 grain 220s i mean you got everything covered there i mean you can go from varmint hunting to uh deer hunting uh bear hunting 
I'm sure you can get into elk and who knows what else you can get into. But around here in the Adirondacks, we're deer hunting with these. And uh, typically you're running a 180 grain. You can go with 150, 180. That's usually out of a three, 308 or a 30 odd six. That's common. Uh, a 30 30, you're going to be running a 170 grain. I don't have one here, but. You, I'm pretty sure that they're running 150s, 170s. The heavier, the better around those bullet. But you can tell the difference here. Pretty cool. But this is my favorite caliber. And we're going to be trying to reload some of these. Got the press over here. Got to set this up. Get it cleaned up. Get it ready to go. So stay tuned. This winter we're going to get into all this. But this is my favorite caliber. And I like to try to keep to one caliber. And it keeps it easier for you to uh, organize yourself. And really keep track of what you're doing. And just simplifies things a little bit. Okay now the favorite part of this video for me is to share. And I did ask Brian, my buddy Brian, his first bear in the Adirondacks. I got some details from him. 80 yard shot from a tree stand, 150 grain, 308 uh, out of a lever action browning. Uh, the bear dress, it was a black bear, it dressed at 334 pounds. Dressed. Uh, you know that thing fully loaded had to be over 400 pounds. And I congratulate uh, Brian, that was a pretty awesome day you get the pictures on the text message and uh you know see a little footage of that thing and i'm going to show these guys uh, a couple pictures of the bear enjoy it if you guys want some details of where he got it uh got it stuffed uh i'll get that information for you guys leave something in the comments if you're really interested and um uh, phenomenal phenomenal and it's a dream come true i'm sure uh we're chasing one around the adirondacks he's um, we're gonna uh, but we're we're kind of thinking twice about it because we're so far back. Uh, he's he's got he looks just like him. He's on camera. He's fat. He's a big boy. I don't know if we even want to take a, sm a smack at him if he comes around. But we'll see. Who knows? You don't know how we're feeling. We'll see. <laughs> so stay tuned. Check these pictures out. Congrats, man. Oh man, I almost forgot too. In uh, Schenectady, um, Scotia area, a moose, big old bull moose, can't believe it, got hit by a car I think last night. This is October 2nd today. Uh, I guess he was on a bridge. I guess he got hit on a bridge by a car. I'll show you a picture of him. And I guess Mama, she was just up the street. Someone got a sighting in... Uh, they got a picture of uh, Mama, so he was probably chasing her around, and they're a good, good distance apart, but hey, they're around here. Schenectady, Rotterdam, New York, Scotia area, Glenville, they're here. They're here. My old man saw one. I'll tell you a quick story, too. Rotterdam Junction on the top of the hill over there in Rotterdam, uh, Rotterdam Junction area. Uh, my uncle and my father, they were both on their walkie-talkies. My father calls my uncle. And tells him, hey, I just saw a, a moose in the woods. I guess it was a little one. And I think my my uncle goes, yeah, right, you're, you're full of it, you know. And, or vice versa. And I think it was my father calling my uncle saying, what are you, nuts? You ain't no moose in the woods. And then, sure as, sure as heck, man, the other guy saw it. And I, I think I might have been sick that weekend. I was young, too. And uh, I missed out on the moose, but... And then the, the following week, this is years ago now, they found one in Scotia, the mother. The mother was in Scotia. So they, she had to swim across the Mohawk River, and she ended up in Scotia. So they were up in the hills of Rotterdam Junction, and they got broken apart somehow. And he was, he was hanging out at our hunting spot. Can't believe it. It was awesome.